This is my Motorola phone running the latest Android 15. And in this video, we're gonna downgrade it back to Android 14. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how you can downgrade any Motorola phone from one Android version to another, whether that's from 15 to 14, 15 to 13, 14 to 12, or any other combination you need. For this demonstration, I'm using the Moto Edge 50 Pro, but I want to emphasize that this method works on virtually any Motorola device. As you can see right here, my phone is currently running the latest available Android version, which is Android 15. To successfully downgrade this device, the first thing you need to do is enable developer options. You'll find this in the device identifiers section under about phone. Right here, you need to tap on the build number multiple times. Keep tapping until you see a toast message confirming that you are now a developer. Now navigate back to the main settings page and click on the systems section. You'll notice this newly enabled developer options appearing here. Go ahead and open developer options, then scroll down to find and enable USB debugging. However, there's something crucial you need to know. You must have an unlocked bootloader before you can downgrade your phone. I've actually created three comprehensive videos covering how to unlock Motorola bootloaders using Android, Windows, and Mac systems. If your bootloader isn't unlocked yet, you can find all these detailed tutorials in the description below. Now let's head back to developer options. Scroll down and make sure to enable USB debugging. After enabling USB debugging, you'll need to download an app called CPUZ from the Play Store. I'll provide you with a direct download link for convenience. Once you have CPUZ installed, navigate to the Device tab and carefully note down your board name. This information is critical for downloading the correct firmware. There's one more piece of information we need, and that's your software channel. You can find this by going back to About Phone in your settings, then navigating to Device Details and noting down your software channel. Perfect! Now that we have both the board name and software channel documented, set your phone aside because we're about to download the firmware. Open your web browser and search for Lenomola. You'll want to access the site called Lolanet Mirror. This website offers two ways to find your firmware. You can either directly search using your board name or you can manually navigate through the directory structure. My phone's board name is EQE. And as you can see, it's showing up in the search results. Let me also show you the manual method. First, navigate to the firmwares directory, then open the Lenomola directory. Next, you'll need to open the directory corresponding to your phone's launch year. Since my phone launched in 2024, I'm opening that specific directory. This directory contains firmware for all Motorola phones that were launched in 2024. My phone's designation is EQE. And after scrolling through the list, you can see there's a directory specifically named EQE. Find your phone's directory based on your board name and navigate to the official folder. Inside this directory, you'll see all the available firmware versions for the Moto Edge 50 Pro, which corresponds to the EQE designation. Now you might be wondering why there are so many different options. The reason is simple. These firmware versions are tailored for different regions like Europe, the United States, and India. Remember that software channel we noted down earlier? My software channel is RETIN, which stands for Retail Indian. So I'm opening the RETIN directory. You'll need to open the directory that matches your specific software channel. If your software channel is enlisted here, don't worry, you can safely download the global retail firmware instead. Here you'll find all the firmware releases that have been made available for your specific phone model. My phone originally shipped with Android 14 and is currently running Android 15, which explains why only these particular Android versions are available here. If your phone originally came with an earlier Android version, you'll see those options as well. Choose and download the firmware version that meets your specific requirements. For this demonstration, I'm downloading the oldest available firmware version. Once your firmware download is complete, you'll need to extract the files first. After extraction, open the firmware folder. The files you're seeing here represent the complete firmware package for my phone. 
but we're specifically looking for one particular file, flashfile.xml. You'll need to open this file in a text editor. Now, if you try to open it with Mac's default text edit or Windows Notepad, it will display as a basic text file, and editing it with simple text editors can be quite challenging. That's why I strongly recommend using VSCode. It's a free, powerful tool from Microsoft that you can install with just one click. After opening the file in VS Code, you'll need to create a new file with the proper extension. If you're using Mac, create a file with the .sh extension. If you're using Windows, create one with the .bat extension. You can give this file any name you prefer, but the extension is absolutely critical. Now comes the important part. You need to convert this XML flashing script into fast boot commands. Looking at the XML file, you'll notice we have two main components, operations and flashing files. For the script, you'll need to type fast boot for both operations and file flashing. Here's how to write the operations. Start with fast boot, then add the operation followed by the parameter. For the flash files, the format is similar. Start with fast boot, then the operation, which will be flash for all files, followed by the partition name and then the file name. You'll need to repeat this process for every single file in the XML. I understand this can be quite time consuming and tedious. If you'd rather not do this manually, there's a smart alternative. You can use ChatGPT to create the fast boot flashing script automatically. Simply copy your XML file content and paste it into ChatGPT. Use the prompt I'll provide in the description and ChatGPT will generate the complete flashing script for both Mac and Windows users. As you can see, the script is now ready for both Mac and Windows users. You can download it as a zip file or save it with the appropriate SH or BAT extension, or simply copy and paste the content. After downloading or creating your script, save it in the same folder where your extracted firmware files are located. Perfect. I've placed the script in my firmware folder. Now we need to flash it using fast boot but before we proceed, you must install Fastboot tools and the necessary drivers from the official Google website. Alternatively, you can watch my bootloader unlocking video where I provide detailed instructions for installing these components. Now, let's get back to our main process. You need to open your firmware directory in the terminal, but there's one important step first. If your directory name ends with XML, make sure to remove that extension. Otherwise, the terminal will treat it as a single file rather than a directory. Open Terminal on Mac or Command Prompt on Windows. Type CD followed by a space. Then drag and drop your firmware folder into the terminal window and press Enter. Great. Now we're inside our firmware directory. Type LS to view all the contents of this directory. To flash the firmware onto your phone, you'll need to reboot your device into fast boot mode. But first, let's verify that our phone is properly connected by using the ADB devices command. If you can see your phone's serial number in the output, that confirms your phone is successfully connected to your PC. If this command doesn't return a serial number, it means either your phone isn't connected properly or you haven't installed the platform tools or USB drivers correctly. Excellent, our phone is connected, so now type ADB reboot bootloader. This command will restart your phone directly into fast boot mode. After your device has rebooted into fast boot mode, you need to make the flashing script executable using this command, chmod plus x, followed by your file name. If you're using Windows, you can skip this step entirely. Instead, you just need to type the file name to execute the script. Once that's complete, type sh followed by your script name. This will initiate the flashing process. You can see the firmware is now flashing and the downgrade process has officially begun. You'll notice some downgrading warnings appearing and these are completely normal, so just ignore them. The firmware is still flashing properly. This process will take several minutes to complete, so be patient. Once the flashing process is finished, 
you'll need to format your device to prevent any potential boot loops. Use this command, fastboot erase user data. After that, type fastboot reboot. This will power on your phone normally. Once your phone turn on, you can choose to relock your bootloader if you prefer. And there you have it. As you can see, my phone is now booting into Android 14 and we've successfully downgraded the Motorola phone. That wraps up this comprehensive tutorial. This video required a tremendous amount of effort and research to create. If you found this guide helpful and want to support my work, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.